Put your hands together, Mr. Matt Borgman. Come on. Nate Borgman. I'm sorry, Nate Borgman. Forgive me. Thank you, Jason. Right, I'm very glad to be here. Thank you uh, to Alex and the Atlantic Council for putting this together. This is great. State Department, wherever you are, over here. Somewhere. Yeah, it's great to be here at the uh, Atlantic Council, way better than the Pacific Council. <laughs> Last week I was at the Pacific Council, it was terrible. China had claimed all the tables. <laughs> we asked, uh, hey man, where are we allowed to sit? He just waved his hand around nine times. We were like, what does that mean? <laughs> we have no idea what that's supposed to mean. They wanted even more tables. In the middle of the show, they uh, commandeered a waiter's tray. By the end of the show, by the end of the show, they built it up so much they were landing jets on it. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. China is very sensitive about who gets to sit at the Pacific Council. It's a, something, you know, we're gonna have to keep in mind over the next 20 years. It's a metaphor, I'm trying to be deep, thank you. <laughs> ah, thank you to uh, Lieutenant General Brent Snowcroft, I'm not sure <laughs> if I can say his first name, I'm not sure if that's rude, he wrote the introduction. 91 years old, way to stay in the game. <laughs> I'm sick. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Burroughs. Um, it's awesome, expert in foreign policy. Uh, I have a policy, and that's not to make jokes about anyone from CIA. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have some drafts in email. He knows already. It's <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's really nice to be here. Uh, I heard that actually that the, uh, the paper, the uh, 2035 paper, is actually in line for one of DC's most prestigious honors. Uh, most summarized report of 2016. <laughs> yeah, number one summary. If you get it down to 160 characters, it might reach the president-elect. <laughs> so, uh, I guess I am here to talk about what I think over the next 20 years. Uh, I do think that the United States is going to uh, continue to expand energy production. That's, I think we can all agree that that's something that's gonna happen. <laughs> Domestic energy production, that's great, you know. Uh, gonna continue to tap those uh, resources on the margin, just squeeze that sponge dry, you know. It's great. My, uh, my aunt is really excited. My aunt loves fracking. She calls it a two-for-one deal. Not only does she save at the pump, but she no longer has to buy home heating oil because she can just set her tap water on fire. <laughs> it's great for her. She loves fracking. Uh, of course, the, uh, the glut of oil and natural gas has lowered prices, really messing with those uh, petro states, you know? You guys know about those petro states. <laughs> Russia, Venezuela. Yeah, Venezuela is suffering from uh, hyperinflation right now. Yeah. This is a country with uh, oil and natural gas reserves on par with Saudi Arabia, but at this point it's easier to heat your home by setting the currency on fire. <laughs> yeah, it's really a dark spot for Venezuela. <laughs> yeah. There's a theme to this, too. There's fire is going to be a theme over the next 20 years. We're either going to have to find new things to set on fire or move away from fire completely. That's going to be what we're going to have to do. Yeah, it's, a, it's a bummer. In Venezuela, you go out to eat, not only is the price of the meal higher, but you have to factor in how much currency was burned to cook it. <laughs> Very difficult to be in Venezuela. Of course, uh, Russia suffering from the same pressures. Uh, Putin, you know, by 2035. Uh, well, I mean, Venezuela, that's a succession crisis, right? We can agree on that a little bit. Uh, Putin also, we're going to have the domestic pressure plus retirement. Putin is eventually going to have to either die or retire. Um, it's, uh, it's a bummer. It's going to be tough. That's going to be a major global headache by 2035. He's made too many enemies to retire peacefully. Too many enemies. Which is why I think that the United States should extend the olive branch. Just let him retire to Florida. I think <laughs> maybe that would be a really good idea for him. Uh, at first, he might be really bummed out by the loss of power and prestige, but I think with Florida's stand your ground law, he'll be able to carve out his own little magic. <laughs> Be a really special thing for Putin. Uh, 
course, we will try, supposedly, to uh, get into green energy, renewables, all that stuff, uh, wind, solar. I'm sure the uh, Pentagon is very anxious about what the impact on their budget will be when the most important part of the president's daily intelligence briefing is the weather. <laughs> yeah, weird change for him, of course, uh, or her, hopefully. Fine. Uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that we're going to stop fighting in the Middle East. We'll still be fighting in the Middle East, but it'll be for all that sunshine. All those sunny days. <laughs> really important. I'll still be over there. Uh, speaking of the desert, uh, water. <laughs> water is also going to be a major issue by 2035. All those uh, glaciers with all that fresh water, it's melting. It's, uh, bless you, going into the ocean. <laughs> going into the ocean, and we all know, once fresh water gets into the ocean, very difficult to get it back out. <laughs> very tricky, requires a lot of energy. Uh, some people think that uh, losing all this fresh water is gonna be a bad thing, uh, and you know, in general, I would agree with that, but on paper, it could be awesome. All right, now listen, hear me out. Um, see, the water, I mean, at this point, we've got so much that we, we, we take it for granted, you know? We, we're not even like pricing it out or anything. Once we actually like appraise this stuff, we might be a country that is both very thirsty and very wealthy. That's something that we might be able to get away with. That's a joke about the uh, limitations of economics, <laughs> uh, measurement. Uh, <laughs> we do have to put a price on some of these things. Uh, externalized costs are an issue. <laughs> Figured if I was gonna bring that up with anybody, I might as well bring it up with you guys. <laughs> Spread the word. <laughs> the uh, classical, uh, yeah, they don't measure everything they need to. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, I think eventually, you know, um, we'll be able to uh, hopefully uh, maybe finance our national debt with the, uh, the Great Lakes as collateral. Uh, sound plausible eventually? We're going to have to figure out some, some way to get more debt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, at any rate. <laughs> I'm fine, we're all fine, it's gonna be great. We'll live through this. Um, but yeah, uh, there's gonna be, uh, we're all here you know, in support of the uh, global liberal economic order state department, thank you. Um, there's gonna be some major challenges. There's gonna be some legal challenges, some PR challenges. You know, What's gonna happen when there's a class action lawsuit of thirsty people versus the water company? You know? It's gonna be a really tricky thing that somebody's gonna have to settle over the next 20 years. Um, I mean, it kind of makes me wish that maybe Roosevelt had been a little bit more specific, maybe gone into the weeds policy-wise when he was talking about freedom from want. You know, you know what I'm talking about? So on the one hand, hear me out, on the one hand, CEO legally obligated to want as much profit as possible. On the other hand, human body naturally obligated to hydrate. Very difficult. A judge is going to have to come down and, you know, the integrity of Western courts are at stake. No big deal. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, you know, I get why these people are uh, upset. Uh, I do get why these people are upset if you have to privatize your water company to uh, pay back loans that some dictator took out 30 years ago. It's, it is a little like taxation without representation, maybe, a little bit, you know? Uh, just because these people are members of the Washington Consensus doesn't mean they need to be treated like Washington, D.C. You know? <laughs> yeah, um, it's, uh, I don't know. There's gonna be challenges, I mean, uh, uh, Mr. Burroughs talks about the global rise of uh, the right wing. Um, I don't think we need to give them any reasons to dismiss globalization as the politically correct name for colonialism. <laughs> or empire, right? I think maybe we should. I'm like 60% sure that we're not all talking about empire when we talk about globalization. <laughs> like 40%, 30 I'm mostly sure that we're not all talking about empire. You know, you gotta be careful, because all these developing countries, you know, if they get annoyed, um, they could just refinance their debt with China. You know, that's gonna be a, just do what I did with my student loans and just refinance, you know? <laughs> a serious thing, man. Uh, it all goes back to China. That's what we need to keep in mind with this. Over the next 20 years, it all goes back to China. I wish it was funnier that it all just goes back to China, but I'm just gonna leave you on that serious note because it's all your jobs to take care of this, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much.
keep it going. Mr. Nate Borgman, keep it going for Nate. All right, All right people.